his buildings project new horizons, while at the same time resonating with actual places and personal memories. His strong character and innovative philosophy challenged the stereotypes of traditional design. Born in 1963 and educated in China, Wang Shu won the 2012 Pritzker Prize at a relatively young age for an architect. Exploration of bamboo, local bricks, roof tiles, and make it in an abstract way to the applicable to the modern times. Meet Wang Shu, who considers himself an amateur, but has the natural dexterity to evoke the past like only a master can do. It was pouring down rain the day I met Wang Shu. We met at Shangshan campus of the Chinese Academy of Art in Hangzhou. This building is called Shui An Shanju and is one of the masterpieces from his collection. And actually, it was a good thing that it was raining because he taught me how to appreciate the wind and the water, both elements that connect us to nature and also to a simpler way of life. In 2012, you won the Pritzker Prize. What does that mean to you? Uh, so you didn't expect it? Yeah, the jury selected you because you have Chinese characteristics within your architecture. Talk about Chinese characteristics. Uh, how do you think that can be defined? 其实我觉得中国建筑的特点是很难用风格来界定的，因为你知道中国特别大，所以经常有人问我说中国的特点是什么？我说中国特点就是它的呃不可思议的多样性，这跟中国的语言的地方的发音的量差不多。中国的地方
呃变化的一种建筑。呃，比如说我们用了大量的材料，都是我称之为更自然的材料。自然的材料它就是有一个特点，比如说这个土墙，这个土墙的话，它能够存在一千年之久，是所有建筑材料里其实最坚固的。完了，它在做好到一千年之间，它在这个里面的结构。一直在变化，它会越来越硬，越来越硬。完了，它会呼吸，嗯，它比如天气变化，它太潮的时候，它就会把水汽吸进来；当这个太干燥的时候，它又会把水汽吐出来。嗯，它这样子。That's incredible. So it's like a living, a living building. Yes. Wang Shu is not daunted by the challenges of construction. In fact, he uses them to his advantage. Working with recycled materials, he's able to send several messages about the careful use of resources and respect for tradition and context, as well as give a frank statement about technology and the quality of construction today, particularly in China. I understand that you spent several years with building materials, and that's helped you now as you create new structures. Maybe in the construction room, like me, a lot of time spent in the scene is not too much. I spent a lot of time in the scene. 呃，主要是因为两个原因。呃，第一个原因呢是，中国的这个建筑，它的这个整个过程推进的速度都非常的快啊，大家都很熟知，有一个词叫中国速度，呃 ，Chinese speed。Chinese speed。对，非常的快。这个快的过程就导致，实际上你的设计还没有完成，呃，施工就已经开始了。另外，施工的过程因为太快，它会犯各种各样的错误，所以你必须要在现场随时解决错误。很多外国建筑师到中国就不能适应这一点，啊，都疯了。啊，因为这个过程确实很困难。第二个是因为我使用大量的回收的材料，啊，像我们香山校园大概用了呃几千万片回收的，就是老建筑上被拆毁之后，我们把它收回来，啊，碎的砖啊、瓦呀、啊，就这类的材料，其实在现场做的时候，包括中国的工匠也不完全知道该怎么用，啊，所以必须要在现场来教他们。Well, I believe there's a lot of Chinese wisdom too, not just in the materials, but also how you put them together. Like even a space like this, I think you call it a natural air conditioning, right? So you have a place to collect the water, the wind can blow through. So in the summer it's nice and cool, and in the winter it's quite warm. 是是是是，所以这个实际上是一个呃特别不可思议的一种活的一个系统啊，就像你说的特别对，它是一种自然空调啊，整个建筑其实就是一个空调，它可以控制冷热。它可以控制风的这个速度。我记得有很多，尤其是外国建筑师到这个建筑里来，来参观完了之后，他们就会老问我一个问题，说这么多种不同的材料，你怎么样把它能够做到一起的？因为对他们来说，这个已经复杂到超出了他们一般的专业想象力。所以我就回答我说，这就是中国文化的一个核心秘密，它形成了一种。特别高效的组织，它可以组织很多人一起做事，但是呢，它并不是单板的命令，它实际上是给每一个人的多样性的发挥是留出了空间的。比如说，我们说 Great Wall， 万里长城修了多少年？那么它肯定是那么大的一个工程，一百年、两百年，呃，万里长城大概不到十年吧，呃，就修好了，嗯、呃，你这不可思议的，你、呃、怎么可能，对吧？但中国人做得到，这是中国的智慧。Yeah. Yeah. Wandering around the Shangshan campus, you can really sense a reflection of Wang's wisdom and spirit. The exterior and interior connections between buildings and private and public spaces provide a rich environment where an emphasis on livability prevails. Wang Su is like an artist. Uh, he is searching uh, for what architecture means to, to him. You know, in Japan they have Tadeo Ando. Uh, in Japan they have Maki. You can tell that the architecture can only be done in Japan. Uh, it can only be built in Japan. Uh, that's why like Fumiko Maki also has a particular price. His work actually very difficult to build his work in other parts of the world. Similarly, I think Wang Xu is probably the only architect in China that's been able to achieve this architecture that uh, rooted in China. And they express what the Chinese architecture should be. What I read that he doesn't use computer, he doesn't, he seldom use a ruler. It tells me that he's not a typical architect. He's a, like a Renaissance man. During the Renaissance period, people like Michelangelo, Da Vinci, you know, they make models of buildings. Uh, they don't 
calculate every little thing. Wang Su probably worked very similarly. I think he creates maybe models, he creates a few sketches, and he's working with a builder uh, on site. Wang Su represent um, an architect that is extremely thoughtful, extremely sensitive uh, to the place where he practiced. I have written a number of uh, texts for foreign magazines um, regarding his work um, in the past, but I've also visited his building in person in Hangzhou. I was really blown away because exploration of bamboo is exploration of uh, local bricks roof tiles and make it in an abstract way to be applicable to the modern times. I'm reminded of Svetlana Boim that uh, talked about the difference between restorative nostalgia and reflective nostalgia. Wang Shu tries to preserve or try to create something new and yet at the same time essence of the old and the people within it, the memory within that place is still intact. We, I visit all China and I, I knew a lot of cities without identity, Chinese identity. And when, when Xu have a strong connection with the past, because he play with the textures, with the colors, and we can feel the Chinese uh, values and the Chinese habits in these buildings. The secret of the future is on the past. No? 我一向不主张做完美的事情这是我的哲学有一点小的缺陷让用的人是有一点机会他还可以再做一点什么事情这是我的哲学 yeah. But that's where the, uh, the conundrum comes because mm -hmm. architects are both scientists and artists mm -hmm. You have to understand math but you also have to understand art mm -hmm. Yes, yes 无论怎么样都要把建筑理解为一个实际上是在时间中它是一个过程它不是一个固定的结果建筑是一个过程 yeah. So like a living building Yes, yeah, yeah. yes after winning the Pritzker Prize, Wang Shu has become quite the celebrity. But rather than resting on his laurels, he remains active in teaching and training the future generation of Chinese architects. About one third of his time he spends here teaching students. Another third of his time he spends working on new projects and the rest of the time he spends traveling the world giving lectures about the wisdom found in both ancient and modern Chinese architecture. I like to with students because have a 你们要找到自己因为我觉得中国的下一步的未来是在乡村的
，很多都找不到中国的痕迹和印象，但中国的乡村还有，呃，而且乡村需要帮助，所以我这些年花越来越多的精力去做。前面刚完成的，比如文村，就是在这附近的一个村落。接下来，如果要对这个世界做出实质性的贡献的话，其实就是应该在这种 sustainable 这种 development 这这个部分，就怎么样能够生态的、环保的来向前发展。而让全世界能看到，在这么快、这么大规模的一个经济体里头，我们能够把生态和环保做得这么好。这中国如果能做到这一点，这就是对世界的未来最大的贡献。Who would have guessed that a young boy traveling by train from Xinjiang to Beijing, sketching every building along the way, would one day rise to unsought fame as a world leader in architecture? As a Chinese icon, Wang Shu articulates well the wisdom of ancient Chinese architecture with his contemporary and modern designs. And all of his works share the same gestalt of transforming communal spaces where people can meet and thrive together.